All right, so in the last video, I showed how to set up the OAuth with your Bubble account so that users can connect to their Bubble or to their app profile in your Bubble application. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and skip over the triggers for this demo and show an action because I already have this single person enrich backend workflow set up. So it's set up without. Um, authentication. So you have to be logged in to run this workflow and it takes in one parameter, just a text input of email. And what it does is it goes and hits our API with that email parameter and it returns that data back to bubble and creates a new person thing in bubble in the database. So this step, it just simply says, do a search for people with the ID of the person that was just returned. If that person doesn't already exist in bubble, then create a person with that ID. And then the next step is to update that person. So now we go search for that person here. It was either created or it skipped. And now to just to avoid having so many inputs, you know, in duplicate spots, one for creating and one for updating, simply create it based on a condition if it doesn't exist. And then I update that record. And so you can see all these fields are being updated with the results of step one. So that creates the person thing. And then this is unique to this application, but we have users, they sign up and join a team. That way, you know, different agencies can, you know, all collaborate in their CRM and, you know, pay for their team to enrich profiles. And so what it does is it adds this person to the CRM of the current user's team. And so you don't have to worry too much about that, but that's what this last step is. So we're going to go ahead and call this API workflow from Zapier. And so what we will do, I'm going to go ahead over to Zapier and we'll get this set up. So it'll be an action since the trigger will be from something else. Um, we'll probably use something like a new call is scheduled in Calendly. Then we'll trigger this action in Enrichly. Let's go ahead and get that set up. So call it Enrich person. Let's do this. That's supposed to be the description. And the noun is just the object that we're working with, so we are doing a person enrich, we'll call it person enrich, and the object we're working with is a person. Description is enrich a person and add them to your team's CRM. Visibility, just where you want it to show, we'll show it above the fold since for this demo, it'll be our only one. So the input designer, this is the input fields that the user will add. So. We're just going to add a simple input field called email. Because that's what our backend API is taking. And it is type string. Don't believe there's an email type in there. Default text. We will not put anything in there and it is required. So you can get fancy here with dynamic fields if it needs to go look up information from your users, from the current user's profile, different things like that. And, you know, that'll be a later video. This one is just a straightforward uh, text input. So we'll go ahead and save that input. You get a little preview over here um, for your email input here. And then we need to set up the API. So this is the API that is going to be hit when... Um, when users make, or sorry, trigger this action. And so we're going to go to settings, API. We're gonna copy this whole workflow. We'll post to that. And then workflow, and then we need the workflow name. And 
And then this bundle auth access token is the current user session, request body, email. Um, this is just the parameters that's being passed through. So that should be good. We'll figure out in a second. Now let's go ahead and test it and see what happens. So in this email, we're going to pass in, uh, one thing I need to do over here is return data to the API. We're gonna go ahead and return the person That will be the result of step three. And for this, we're going to use the same email. Actually, we'll use this dummy email from their documentation. And let's see how this goes. Test request. All right, so it was successful. So it hit that API and it will show us all the information. So it shows the current user created by, and then it goes in and shows all of their information of the new thing that we are returning from this API. So we're showing this person. So we'll go ahead and look over here. We will look for Sean. And this is the profile that was just created or updated and the profile that was returned to Zapier. So we have all this great information. Let's go ahead and finish testing. And then define your output. We'll look at that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that blank because to be completely honest, I'm not sure what this does just yet. Um, I believe this is data that is outputted by Zapier and can be used in follow-up actions in the workflow that you set up in Zapier. But we're gonna go ahead and leave this blank for now. We'll go ahead and save output and finish. And now this action has been updated. So that is how you create an action. And the next step, I will go ahead and create a Zap using this private app and we will test it all out.